So we're going to pick up with radicals again here uh, using multiplication as our operation of interest. And I'm going to start off with this one uh, that you see right here. And there's no addition involved. It's just straight multiplication. It's one term times another term. And granted, they're complicated terms, but it's all just multiplication. This is actually going to be pretty easy. What you do in multiplication is anything that's outside the radical sign, the coefficients, you multiply those together. So negative 4 times 2 makes negative 8. And then anything inside the multiplication sign, or inside the radical sign, excuse me, you multiply those together too, and they stay under a radical sign. So this becomes negative 8 times a big radical of x to the 8th power times phi cubed times x to the 9th power phi to the 7th. Okay. Now remember, when you're multiplying variables that have exponents, you want to add up the exponents. So this becomes negative 8, and we add up the exponents of x. 8 plus 9 is 17. We add up the exponents of phi, and you get 10. Now if you think about these things, what is phi to the 10th power? We could make a factor tree for that, right? It would be kind of a silly factor tree, because, uh, well, it doesn't take too long until you get to a point where you can stop playing this game. Um, phi to the 10th is just phi to the 5th times phi to the 5th. See, those 5s would add up to 10. So what's the square root of this pair? Well, you just pull out one of those phi to the 5ths, and you get negative 8 phi to the 5th times the square root of x to the 17th. And what's x to the 17th? Well, let's think about that. x to the 17th is just x times x to the 16th, right? And x to the 16th is x to the 8th times x to the 8th. So we've got another pair right here. We can pop out one of those x to the 8ths, and this becomes negative 8 times phi to the 5th power times x to the 8th power, but there was a little x left behind in the radical sign. So we are not rid of radicals. This is as far as we can simplify this problem. Now I had variables here, x and phi, but if you have numbers, like if one radical had 5 and the other radical had 3, it works the same way. You multiply what's under the radical and you get radical 15. Okay, we'll do plenty more examples of that coming up. So I have three more good ones down here. So this is foiling with radicals, and we're going to do a little uh, multiplication and addition at the same time. So let's start with the top line, uh, number 1 here. Number 1 says uh, you've got this parentheses times that parentheses. Well, if you remember how parentheses multiply together from our work in polynomials, you'll be able to see where I'm getting these numbers. First, you do 2 times 2 to make 4. Then you do 2 times 4 radical 6 to make 8 radical 6. Then we do negative 4 radical 6 times 2, so that's negative 8 radical 6. And you do negative 4 radical 6 times 4 radical 6, which is, careful now, negative, the 4s multiply, so that's negative 16 times radical 36. Okay, so 8 radical 6 minus 8 radical 6, those cancel each other out. And what we have is 4 minus 16 times root 36. Well, root 36 is just 6. So this is going to be 4 minus uh, 96, I think. And that's going to be equal to negative 92. So that's how you uh, foil in general. I'll do some more examples of that. But I want to point out something. Did anyone notice that this is... I need some more room here to talk. Did anyone notice that this guy is the difference of squares? Take a look. We've got a, which is 2, and we've got b, which is 4 radical 6, and you're either doing a minus b or a plus b. So this is, this is our good old friend a minus b times a plus b. So it's no surprise that we get a squared minus b squared. And that is this right here, a squared minus b squared. Okay, so be on the lookout for polynomial identities that we can use in this unit. They will come up. So next one, number two. Um, well, you know what, skip number two. I think, I think we get the idea. I want to jump ahead to number three. That one looks more interesting to, the, to me because not everyone remembers what that squared means. Um, 
And I'll give you an example of what I see a lot of times. People often do this. 5 radical 3 squared minus 2 radical 2 squared. I hope you see the problem with this. That squared does not get distributed like it's multiplication. That would be incorrect if we wrote that. What it means is you have the parentheses times itself. So you have another parentheses right here that looks exactly the same. And now we're going to go through the foiling method. Remember first, outer, inner, last, just like I did previously. So 5 radical 3 times 5 radical 3 makes 25 uh, radical 9. And then we have 5 radical 3 minus uh, times negative 2 radical 2. That becomes minus 10, right? 5 times negative 2. And then root 3 times root 2 is root 6. Okay, the inner terms. This one is negative 10 root 6, same reasoning. And the outer term is positive 4, right? It's negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4 times root 4. And now we simplify all these things. This is going to be 25 times 3 minus, it looks like I have two pairs here, or one pair, of 10 root 6s. So that's going to be 20 root 6. And then plus 4 times root 4, well, root 4 is 2. This becomes 75 minus 20 root 6 plus 8. And all the way simplified down as far as we can go, we get 83 minus 20 root 6. Okay? So that's how you do foiling with radicals. There's not a whole lot to it. All the rules work the same as polynomials. Um, you'll get quicker to recognizing things like, see, I did, uh, let's outline a step right here. I did 2 radical 2. And I multiplied that together to get 4 radical 4. Well, as you get more practice, you'll just immediately say, oh, wait, radical 2 squared, that's just equal to 2, so this becomes 8, right? That, that'll be natural.